All right, welcome back, everybody. What are we doing today? Chapter five. What is today? Day 10. Not 21. We're on day 10 or eight of lecture. Lecture. Fuck. Lecture. Eight day of lecture and. Uh, we're starting chapter five, probability. Chapter five on probability is not a st stat crunch chapter. This is, there's, stat crunch is a bitch to use for this chapter. Because you're only using it for a calculator. Or chapter five, a regular calculator works much better. And it doesn't need to be on that fancy the calculator. My little eight dollar calculator does it. Everything I need. So let's talk about pro what probability is. Uh, probability. is the long-term proportion where probability thank you that was not a b it was supposed to be a b it looked like probability yeah like what yeah, that was me fucking up. Probability is a long-term proportion in which a certain outcome is observed. observed. In certain situations with short-term Uncertainty. Another way of saying that is it's the measure of the likelihood of a random event or phenomenon or not phenomenon. <coughs> occurring or to occur. There's something I need you guys have seen today and I don't know if everyone's seen one. So I'm gonna put it on the screen. Give you guys a little bit longer to write that before I show it.
a deck of playing cards. Has everyone like actually used a deck of playing cards? Has anyone not used a deck of playing cards? Everyone has seen a deck of playing cards in here? That's fantastic. This is an anomaly. I have found nowadays that a lot of, well, maybe the pandemic fucking changed shit up. You're stuck at home and fucking parents or someone showed you how to play some cool shit like poker. All right, deck of playing cards has four different suits. Diamonds, clubs, hearts, and spades. Each suit has 13 different ranks. They're called ranks. Uh, 10 of them are numbers, where ace counts as A is an ace, it counts as one, or 11 sometimes, depending on the game. And jack, queen, and king are called face cards. J is for jack, Q is for queen, K is for king. So, and there are 52 cards. So common events that we do this stuff for is deck of cards. Uh, we use probability on it a lot. And just a recap of what I just showed, 52 cards with four suits, hearts, clubs, diamonds and spades. And 13 rings. Ace, king, queen, jack, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. Sometimes some games have ace at the high end. Some games have ace at the low end. But there's 13 different ranks. Another common usage of this is dice, rolling two dice. And I think the easier way to just show this, do this is show a picture. We're looking at the sum of the dice when we do them. All the corners. What? The sun. We're adding. It's not necessarily corners. Some stuff isn't in the corner. So we like got the dice depicted. If I roll a two and a three, if this is a two and this is a three, I get a five. Or I can do this one is a two and this one is a three and I still get a five. So there's two ways to roll a two and a three and get a five, <clears throat> okay? Uh, seven is the most like of uh, most common occurrence. And we will look at use this kind of table when we're uh, doing stuff a little bit. I will write it down for you guys so it's in the lecture notes. And I'll show it by the number of pips. Pips are the spots on a dice. That's a new fun word for you in case you didn't know it.
and you're just adding up the columns. The main diagonal this way is a seven. And as you go up a diagonal, it's one lower. And you go down a diagonal, it's one higher. This is a nice little pattern to fill these in with. When all outcomes are equal or equally likely, probability is actually easy to calculate. So if I wanted the probability, when we write it as a big P, that the sum equals five, I count up the total number of options that have a five as the sum. So total number of outcomes that equals five over the total number of outcomes in general. That's the or the numbers are set up in there. What? Or the numbers or you were adding, right? Or yeah, yeah, some yeah I'm adding. Sorry. I'm adding the spots or the pips. Oh fine. There are four fives. And there are 36 outcomes. If I wanted to simplify that, that would simplify to 1 over 9. But I think leaving it as 4 over 36 is the more helpful way of writing it. This actually looks a lot like frequency. If I'm looking at the table, remember frequency is X over N, where X is the number of outcomes over the number over the sample size. If I treat those as each as an outcome, I would get four over 36 from the table as well. So they look the same. Often they're calculated the same. For many of the things they're calculated the same, but they mean different things.
Frequency measures how often an event occurred in the past. Or uh, maybe I should say, or during a unit of time or number of trials. The difference between that and probability? Probability is the likelihood of a future event occurring. I think I got too many R's there. That looks better. In fact, they're so related, the empirical method of probability uses experimentation to get the frequency. And so long as n, our sample size, is large enough, we use that for future occurrences or the probability of future occurrences. Yeah, I can't fucking spell occurrence. That doesn't look right either. How do you fucking spell occurrence? I got two R's right there. I'm going to go back to two R's. No. A N C. And I, now, I, now I'm fucking second guessing myself. Let's just fucking Google it. It's two hours. Hurts. Which means that was probably occurring up here. Normally, I don't fuck up spelling words. That's like the one word that's giving me a fucking. Tomorrow doesn't bother me. Effect versus effect doesn't bother me. Spelling occurrence, I could fail. That's actually, yeah, it's pretty, pretty neat. This empirical method, I'm actually going to show you. I wish I had brought them. They're in my fucking office. They're in my office, and we could have played a game, but we're not going to. I'll show you the equivalent of it. The classical method, I'm going to talk about that real quick. A probability of finding probability. That's where outcomes are equally likely. Like the sum on, or like 
rolling two dice, drawing a random card. Now I gave the example of rolling a five earlier. I want to put it in general terms. Because I've, I've been using things like general terms here, like an event and stuff like that. So maybe we should go over a little terminology. I want to make sure everyone's got a chance to finish writing this down. I do see some pins still going, so I'm going to be patient. Everyone good? Okay. So I said the probability of the sum being a five, but normally we say the probability of E, or E is represents the word event. The probability of an event is the number of ways E occurs over the total number of ways, total number of all possible outcomes. The example I gave earlier, the event was rolling a five. And there were four ways to do it. We get a one and a four. We can get a four and a one. We get a two and a three. Or a three and a two. Now, those might look like the same thing. But if, say, you have a green die, and a red die, let me change one of these boxes to green. You'll see in each case, the green die has a different number on it and the red die has a different number on it. Neither of those look like dice. They look like little cubes I drew. Not cubes, but like boxes. They don't look square. I normally draw a better cube. Triangular prisms? Well, a cube is a prism. I was going for a cube, like actual Small. square box. A dice. I don't even know that everybody has used dice. I don't know that every asshole has Yahtzee or Monopoly in it. Other games that have dice. So the event is rolling a five. So event clearly means event is a, a collection of outcomes. That collection was these.
Now, they like to use the phrase sample space. Sample space, and they give it an S, which is fucking confusing because S is standard deviation in this class. Sample space S is the set of all outcomes. So that's like our N. And the way we usually use the probability of E is the frequency of E over the total trials, which is basically the relative frequency. That's what I should have said earlier. I said frequency. It was relative frequency. Where did I say that? I said some stupid shit on a previous page. Said on this one. I said this looks like frequency. No, it looks like relative frequency. It's a proportion. Frequency is just the top. My bad. Got a little carried away. All right, go back to that one. Another way they call this, they call it N of E over N of S. Number of ways E occurs. over the number of all possible ways. We have two rules for probability, two major rules, probability. The probability of E occurring or P of E is always greater than or equal to zero and always less than one, less than or equal to one. So if the probability of E equals zero, it's impossible. Probability equals one, it's certain.
And we tend to use probability of E less than 0 0.05. That's our measure of unusual. This is going to be a recurring theme in this class. When the probability is less than 0 0.05, it's unusual. This is like our outlier flag. If it's in the unusual zone, it's an outlier. That was the first rule. The probability is between zero and one. The second rule is the sum of probabilities has to equal one. Notation wise, we'd use our sum symbol. So a probability model is usually written as like a table. It has the outcomes and their probabilities listed. They have to meet the rules of probability. They must meet the rules of probability. To be a probability model. Otherwise, they're just a table of numbers and that's all they are. Without that, it's just a table of numbers.
All right, you guys ready to see the fun game? This game is called Pass the Picks. I'm going to show you their Wikipedia page, and we're going to write down their probabilities. But I think you need to see how cute these little bastards are. Look at these cute little piggies. They're little tiny, little tiny little things. And you roll them like dice. And I don't know who came up with this game. Someone wants to carve two identical fucking pigs. Notice that the pig has got a dot on this side. The other side doesn't have a dot. So they put a dot on one side and no dot on the other side. And depending on how the pig lands, you score different points. So the, the possible setups for the pigs are if the pig lies, lands with the side with no dot up, this is so like side with no dot up. That's one outcome. Side with the dot up is another outcome. And how much the points are worth are not really relevant here. It's the probabilities of rolling them. A Razorback lands on his back. So that's the, the feet are up in the air. The trotter is when he lands on his feet. There's a snouter and he is leaning forward on his no nose. On his snout. And then there's something called the leaning jowler. He, his nose is touching the ground, nose and one ear are touching the ground. Now, generally this one has like there's more of the pig touching the ground. Real quick on the pig. The pig on the right is doing the snouter. He's leaning forward, his back feet are up in the air. If he's tipped to the side a little bit and on his nose, that's the leaning jowler. His back feet will still be up in the air. One of the foot will be, he'll have one foot on the ground, an ear on the ground, and his nose on the ground. It's not essential yet. Like the, the exact prettiness of it. But the probabilities of these happening are, uh, they are listed as 30 point, oh, did they change since I've written my notes? I suspect not. Side with no dot is 34.9%. Side with dot is 30.2%. A razor back occurs 22.4% of the time. A trotter occurs 8.8% .8 of the time. A snouter is 3% of the time. And a leaning jowler is 0.61% of the time. These are not equally likely. So these were calculated empirically.
And the number of pigs they rolled was 11,954. They rolled 11,954 pigs. And so we can actually see how many times each thing was rolled. In fact, you're going to have several problems on the homework, not related to past the pigs, but they'll ask you, the homework will go, if it happens a thousand times, how many do you expect to happen? This follows the same premise of what I'm about to do here. I'm doing it with the leaning jowler, and I'm going to do it right here. So if it happens X number of times. The way you do it is you take the number of occurrences or the number of uh, trials, which is N, and you multiply it by the probability. So 0.61% as a decimal is 0 0.0061. And if I multiply that by 11,954, I get, but what do I get? I know it's close to 73. I get 72.9194. There's no way we rolled 72.91 pigs. So there's some rounding somewhere. This is, we'll say 73 leaning jowlers. And I could do that for each of them. You will have that on several problems. You will calculate the probability of an event, and then they'll go, like, if a thousand people, you ask a thousand people, well, how many people would you expect to have the so and so uh, trait, whatever it is, like maybe it's red hair or some shit like that? And if you, they gave you calculated probability, and then they said, if you ask a thousand people, how many would you expect? You're going to do the same thing. You would take a thousand and multiply by the probability. You're going to do it in the homework a lot. So you're going to do a lot of multiplying of the sample size times the probability. Let's go backwards. I'm going to start with the 73 and the 11, 954. So like they started with 73 being jowlers. It was 73 over a total was 11,954. And you do that in the calculator. And I get 0 0.00610674. And that's why they rounded that to 0.61%. Are you guys with me? So there's a lot of frequency stuff so far, I and mean, relative frequency so stuff so far. I would claim my I claim that eleven thousand nine hundred fifty four is a large number. Would you agree? It's a lot of times to roll a goddamn pig or a die. It's a large number. What if I rolled one more time and got another lean jeller? One more pig, just one more. 
and luckily got a leaning jeller. Now, I can recalculate the probability. Let's recalculate the probability. Probability of a leaning jar. My leaning jar, leaning jar count went from 73 up to 74. And my total increases by one because I rolled the pig one more time. And I get 0 0.006189, some more shit. If I round here, this is 0, 0.0, I'm sorry, not round. If I convert to a percent, it is now 0 0.62%. We went from 0.61% to 0.62%. Does that seem like it's changed hardly at all? No. The percentage has barely moved. Barely shifted. 0.61% to You're still writing it down. Okay, so this represents, this is an example of the law of large numbers. As the number of trials increases, or grows larger, the proportion approaches the true probability. So this is why they like, don't ask everybody. If you're gonna do a survey, you don't, you can stop after you get a lot because eventually asking more people doesn't really fucking change the answer. You're just wasting your time. It changes it, but not enough to be like important. 
but it's got to get to a large number. If we only had 10 people or nine people and I asked one more, it probably is going to change quite a bit. If I had 100 people, adding one more is going to move the needle by 1%. That's still maybe not large enough, depending on how much, like how exact you want. But if you have like a thousand people and now it can only move by 0.1% and 10,000 people, it can only move by 0.01%. The more you ask, the less damage each individual person does. I have a good example written down in my notes I didn't show you earlier. So like the homework will tell you something like this. The probability of a left-handed person is 0 0.11. How many left-handed people, I'm going to say LH, out of 5,000 can you expect? And they'll give you the options. They'll say e exactly or approximately or maybe about. They'll give you those two as like something to choose from. Usually like it's an A or B. You know how they like to give sentences so far and just change one fucking word. It's, it's one of those examples. One will say exactly. One will say approximately. And we're going to do 5,000 times 0.11. And I get 550. That's not 550. That's 550. You'll type in the cal the number you calculated, and it's the approximately one. You'll get around 550. You might get 548. You might get 553. But it should be near 550 if you asked 5,000 people. Probability gets us close to the answer. If we rolled the 11,954 pigs again, we probably wouldn't get 73. We might get 72 or 74, but who knows? It was a low percent, so it might even be less. But it's going to be pretty close to 73 pigs. Okay, uh, I've used the word experiment a couple times. So let me like define, like be a little more like descriptive of that, what we mean in statistics by it. Experiments are any process where the outcome is uncertain. I don't need to mix chemicals to have an experiment. Asking you what your favorite color has an uncertain outcome. That's an experiment. Or asking people what their favorite color is. That outcome is not certain. And we'll use the word trial to go as an experiment done once, basically. So in the case of what's your favorite color, me just asking one person in particular, that's a trial.
Something else that shows up in 5.1 is subjective probability. This is where it's it's not really measurable. So we rely on uh, personal judgment. Usually of experts. This happens with like meteorology, determining the weather, predicting the weather. <clears throat> I mean, sure, they have software that does it when you watch the news, but that was programmed off of a, we a, a weather man's predictions. That says meteor lady, meteorology is what I want to say. Uh, economics happens to do this too. Is the stock gonna rise or fall? comes with experience and personal opinion. And that one's definitely less precise than weather. That was all 5.1. Does anyone want to take a five minute break? All right, let's take a five minute break and then we'll do 5.2 and hopefully 5.3. All right, let's continue our exploration of chapter five. 5.2 uh, is on the addition rule and complements. I wanna lead with an example, the board game Monopoly. Has anyone in here not played Monopoly? It's okay if you haven't, but if you haven't, I kind of want to like show you the board and explain what the game's about. Wow, we've got a, a good group of people that played the one of the worst games on the fucking planet. Monopoly is only fucking fun if you're fast, if you're cutthroat. Monopoly is really fast if you're fucking cutthroat. You don't have enough money? Fuck you, you're out. Not, I'll buy your property for this much. That makes the game, like a fucking 45 minute game, take five hours. If you play Monopoly with more than two people, then you've got someone sitting around that loses after an hour, waiting for four fucking hours for everybody else to finish. It is not a family friendly game. Unless you're cutthroat. And in 45 minutes, you can knock everybody out. Okay, so the board game Monopoly, uh, there's a square called free parking and I don't know about your family's house rules, but my family's house rules is all taxes and fees go into free parking. And if you land on it, you get the money. I know Monopoly can go fast because I tried it on a video game once with my wife where we said, just use the standard rules. The game was fucking hella quick. It is super quick if you don't change the rules. So let's say you're on electric company. which is eight squares away from free parking. Uh, you want, to roll an eight to get free parking. Oh, 
or roll doubles so you can keep going around faster. So you can try again. <clears throat> Try for free parking faster. So the probability of rolling an eight, how many ways can we get an eight? We can do two and six, and I can do six and two. I can do three and five, and I can do five and three. And I can do four and four. There are five ways to roll an eight out of 36 total ways. Probability again doubles. Well, we got we got ones, we got twos, we got threes, we got fours, we got fives, we got sixes. So the probability of getting doubles is six out of 36. Everyone with me so far? What's the probability of eight or doubles? Well, I have all five ways of the eight. And I have one, one, I have two, two, I have three, three. I already have four, four up here. So I don't want to double count it. I have five, five, and I have six, six. There are five plus five equals 10 ways out of 36. Notice if I added, if I just did probability of eight plus probability of doubles, I have five over 36 plus six over 36 is 11 over 36. It's one too high. And that one too high is the four, four counted twice. The 4-4 four, four is actually both, right? 4-4 four, four is eight and doubles. Right? It falls into both categories. It's an eight and a double. And so we had to, eff if effectively, there's only one of those if we subtract the probability of that, there's only one of them, there's one out of 36 there. If we subtract that bad boy, we're gonna get the 10 out of 36. Does that, does that make sense? 
We added them up. We got 11 over 36. If we just add them up, which is the easier thing to do, and then subtract where they overlap, where the number is both, then we get to the 10 over 36. This is the general addition formula. The general addition rule for probability. If we are looking at the probability of events E or F, it equals the probability of E plus the probability of F minus the probability of E and F. So applying that to our last scenario, probability of eight or double is the probability of an eight plus the probability of a double minus the probability of eight and double. Which was five over 36 plus six over 36 minus one over 36. And when you have the same denominators, you just add or subtract numerators. Five plus six minus one on top is 10 over 36. What about rolling three year doubles? Three has only two ways a one and a two, or a two and a one. So two ways for a three. We already saw there was six ways for a double. Is there anything, is there, what about three and double? Is there any overlap between three, rolling a three and a double? No. I, to get a double, I need both dice to be the same. And I look at the threes and both dice are not the same. There's no combination of it. So there's zero ways for three and double. So if we apply this to our probability thing here, we've got probability of three or double equals two over 36 plus six over 36, minus zero over 36. Which is just the, the tissue two over 36. We don't need the zero over 36, right? That's extra. We get two plus six over 36 is eight over 36. And I we could simplify, but I don't think that's helpful for the presentation.
events that have mutually ex exclusive outcomes which means no outcomes in common or no overlap. Are called disjoint events. D I S J O I N T. That happens when probability of E and F equals zero. And it simplifies the general addition formula. I'm not going to call it the general one anymore, but it simplifies to an addition formula of probability of E or F equals probability of E plus probability of F. Some books and teachers teach this one first because it's the easier one, but y'all are smart. You can figure out how to add and subtract and you get the idea that the doubles is fucking extra. You understand it. So the top formula always works. This always works. This one only works if the outcome is, the, the overlap is zero. You can always use the top formula though. So if you're gonna pick one to memorize, memorize the top one. It's not that much more. All right, the next idea is called the complement. Complements. And it's not like paying somebody a compliment. It's spelled a little bit differently. We have an E here rather than an I. That for like when you give someone, say something nice about someone, that's I right there rather than an E. So compliments. The complement of event E and it's denoted as E with a C up top contains all of the outcomes not in E. Oops.
So when we had our event, E was rolling an eight. E complement is rolling anything but an eight. And looking at the probability of rolling an eight, and if I add that to not an eight, this was five over 36, which means there were 31 outcomes that were not an eight. We get 36 over 36, which is one. When you have a complement, the probability of E plus the probability of the complement of E equals one. And if we do a little bit of algebra, subtract probability E over, we can find the probability of the complement by doing one minus the probability of E. This is handy when it's not something like dice or cards. Like I, you can't calculate the probability of not rolling a leaning jowler unless you've done the experiments and got a whole bunch. And now we could subtract or we could add up the other ones. Notice that uh, E and the complement of E are mutually exclusive or disjoint. That's not a two way street. Mutually exclusive doesn't mean event and event complement, like three and doubles were mutually exclusive. They had no overlap, but they did not add to one. So E and the, the complement of E add to one and they're mutually exclusive events. So let me give you an example where this scenario is really handy and it's in the fucking homework. It may not be the exact description I give, but it's just like this. Let's say we have 18 girls and 12 boys in class. And we pick four at random. What is the probability probability I'm feeling it's spelling wrong probability that at least one is a girl Well, how many options do we have right here? We're picking four. We could get zero girls, one girl, two girl, three girls, or all four girls. So to answer that question, we need the probability of a one or a two or a three or a four. Let's call that E. I 
I can tell you right now, calculating that is a pain in the fucking ass. We'll see how to calculate that in a little bit. Uh, when we do, uh, ooh. oh, it's in uh, chapter six, binomial events. Calculating something like this will show up in binomial events. Uh, and it's a pain in the ass. There's an ugly ass formula. There's factorials in it. There's exponents all over the fucking place. It's nasty. But what's the complement of E? If that's E, what is E complement? What are all the outcomes that are not a one, a two, or three, or a four? Just zero. Zero is all boys. We get no girls, it's all boys. This is much easier. So we can do the probability of E equals one minus the probability of the complement of E. This equation goes two ways up here. We can also do probability of E equals one minus probability of event complement. Calculating all boys is so much easier. Get ready for the next one. All right. 5.3 is on independent events. This is a short section. And I kept going with, there was 36 total outcomes for dice. Or the sum of two dice. And with an image, we can count them. But there's an easier way. And it has to do with independent events. If we have two events going on and they don't impact or affect each other, They are independent events.
For example, rolling two dice. They might hit each other. They might rock around, they might clash, but the, the probability of any given number being on top when it lands, finally finishes rolling, doesn't change. The probability for any roll is one sixth. There's only one way to get a five out of the six ways you can roll a dice. So the probability doesn't change there. Uh, another example of this is drawing two cards, but drawing cards and replacing them after each draw. So I'll let you pick a card and then we put the card back in the deck and I'll let you pick a different card and we put, we put the card back in the deck, that kind of thing. Uh, th this is what five, that's 5.3, 5 5.4, which we're not doing today. There's more with 5.3, but 5.4 is the dependent events. And that is where they affect each other. And we'll do more on that next week. But just to give you an example of it, it's like drawing cards without replacement. or dealing cards. If you deal cards, the, the cards are out on the table, it, the, the, the thing changes. We'll look at that more next week, but let's talk about independent events. Let me get a chance to write that down. I want to point out the difference of between the words with replacement and with re without replacement, because the homework will mention this. They'll say cards, deal, drawing cards with replacement or without. If E and F are independent events, then the probability of E and F is the probability of E times the probability of F. I'll give you an example with dice stuff in a second. All right, let's look at an example with dice. Uh, so let's say we have a blue die and a red die. That way it's easy to distinguish between the two. And we're gonna say uh, the probability that the red die equals a five and the blue die equals a six. Hmm. 
Now, dice have on them, a single die has one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those are the sides on a die. A six-sided die. There's dice that are different shapes. But for a standard six-sided dice, those are our shapes, those are our number of sides. And so the probability of getting the red one being a five is there is one way to get a five out of six total options. The option of the blue one being a six, there is only one six out of six different options. So if I do the probability of red equals five and blue equals six, it's the probability of red equals five times the probability that blue equals six. Which conveniently was one six for both of them. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply the top separately from the bottom, and we get 1 over 36. Has anybody not played Yahtzee? The game with the five dice? You haven't played Yahtzee? Okay. When you're in Yahtzee, to get a Yahtzee, you get three rolls to get five of a kind. Uh, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, or sixes. We're not going to do this thing with three rolls. We're just going to say the probability of getting in one roll. Probably three rolls is cluster five. Let's say, let's just see the probability of getting a Yahtzee in one roll. Spelled it wrong there. Yeah. This means it's either all ones or twos or threes or fours or fives, or sixes. And there's the word all missing on each of those, but just pretend it says all. That takes up a lot of room to write all that. We saw from the previous section, we could do this as probability of ones, plus the probability of twos, plus the probability of threes, plus the probability of fours, plus the probability of fives, plus the probability of sixes. That was our general addition thing, and we would subtract anything they had in common, but these are all different dice rolls, so there's nothing in common. This was the addition formula. So let's just look at like getting all sixes. All right, fuck it, all threes. Let's just focus on threes. The others are similar. This means the first one is a three, and second equals three, and third equals three, and fourth equals three, and fifth equals three. So 
fucking tedious to write out. It's really tedious to write out. I feel your pain. I know you know how I feel it. I just had to fucking do it. Some some students won't write everything down, but if you're writing down, I I, I have suffered with you. And dice rolls are independent events, which means this is the probability that the first equals three times the probability that the second equals three times the probability that the third die equals a three times the probability that the fourth die equals a three times the probability that the fifth equals a three. That got ugly. But each of those is a simple thing. Each of those is one sixth. Which means it's one over six to the fifth power. which is one over 7,776. That was just the probability of all threes in one roll. Is it gonna be different for rolling all ones or all twos or all fours or all fives or all sixes? <laughs> It's not different, is it? So the probability of all one kind, one number, should be the same for any of them. It should be that one over six to the fifth. So I can add them all up. If I wanted to go back up here and do the very top one, which is what we we're trying to do, we just got the probability of one of them. If we want the probability of any Yahtzee, we had to add them all up like we have up here, but they're all the same. And if I add that up, there's six of them. And repeated addition is multiplication. And this turns into one over six to the fourth. Which is one over 1,296. Not a big probability. I know we're running out of time. I want to give you one last concept that might help you in some of your things. Does the first die I rolled matter? So I roll them one at a time. If I, let's say I roll a, a six on the first one. Does that matter? Does that affect my Yahtzee? No. The only thing that matters right now is that the rest match it. <clears throat> Yahtzee is the rest have to match. So doing any Yahtzee is kind of like doing a Yahtzee of a specific one. Let me say this again. It's like a four of a kind for a specific value. The first one doesn't matter. So it's just the second and the third 
and the fourth and the fifth have to match the first one. And those are all each one sixth. And if you multiply those, you get one over six to the fourth. And what I was writing here was probability that that number matches the first die. So the probability that the second die matches the first die times the probability that the third die matches the first die. And that's, that's a wrap. That took the full two hours. Have a good day, guys. Have a good weekend.